Hey everyone, this is Jesse with Idaho Homesteading. Wanted to do a, a video on my latest setup, which is this Goldfish Aquaponics Indoor System. It's super small. Um, I have some feeder goldfish that I purchased from Petco. I think they're generally 25, 30 cents a piece. And I just want some uh, fish that can produce some cuttings um, inside. Um, I have some plants inside that I can pot up in the uh, the system that I'm building and just make new plants all year long in that system. So here's the overall design of the system. You have the fish tank on the bottom with a plastic tote on top. And I think this is like a 12 quart tote uh, just from Walmart, a couple bucks. And it should allow me to place some lava rock in the top of this um, and have the water pump through this tote and go to the bottom. So this is a banjo half inch bulkhead fitting and it will be used to, um, I'll drill a hole in this tote and put this fitting in so that the water can't go past um, unless it's going through this hole. So you put some PVC um, piping fittings in this and it'll create a system where the tote can fill up with water and drain in kind of a mechanical manner. So the water level is always changing and it's always um, kind of filtering through things. The pump that I'm using is this home Homacy 80 gallon per hour pump. It's four watts and it's, um, I think it's about $9 on Amazon. I've used two of these before in my outdoor aquaponics system in Seattle and they're not very strong, but they're cheap and they lasted for months. Um, so this pump is gonna be used at the bottom of the fish tank and pump through the tote at the top. The, um, the piping that it uses is a half inch uh, aquarium piping, which I'll show later in this video. So it comes with two different fittings. Um, one is for the half inch pipe, and it looks like you probably have a quarter inch or something a lot smaller to that. So it's a very small pump. Uh, it's probably an inch and a half by an inch and a half square, and it's pretty quiet. It's adjustable. Um, there's a setting on the pump itself where you can maximize the water flow or turn it down based on kind of what your needs are. I would say that using a half inch pipe, it can probably pump about three feet um, vertically, which is not a whole lot, but it still works pretty well. So here's the tubing um, that I was talking about. Uh, I think about 10 feet is maybe $10 or so from Amazon. So I'll be using this tubing to, I'll, I only need about a foot or two to run from the bottom of the fish tank to that um, tote with all the rocks um, put in there. So just a quick cut and um, I'll show you some different fittings that I had later in the video. We bought a, uh, a 90 degree elbow. Um, it's like an irrigation elbow that you can use for this tubing. And that kind of allows me to um, set it up in a good way. So in this part, um, I need to drill a hole in that, um, that tote for the banjo fitting. This is a one and three quarter inch hole saw. So you can use that. I put a, a couple pieces of wood underneath. So when the bit goes through the plastic, um, it'll have something kind of supporting it because I don't want this to um, get ruined in any way and and break because um, we don't want to do that. So just using a drill, I was able to drill um, easily. It didn't break this tote. Um, just be careful with it and do it gently because they probably can break pretty easily. And once you get through um, the tote, you're going to have to clean up the hole a little bit. It can leave some burrs. So I just busted out a, uh, a pocket knife and cut some of the burrs off and made it so it was smooth and able to um, accept the banjo fitting around it. When I put on that banjo fitting, um, you'll turn it upside down and that you can see kind of how the piping will connect on both sides. 
Uh, once again, it uses a half inch male PVC pipe. So here's with that banjo fitting installed. You can see the orientation of it. Um, the part that sticks out is gonna be on the bottom. And I'm using the half inch tubing to kind of push the water into the top there. And I'll probably adjust this um, with some different fittings later on. So once it starts filling up, um, it will go to that level wherever that hole is at the top and that sets the water level. For a flood and drain system like I'm building here, we will put a PVC pipe on top of that and that will determine the water level based on what I'm seeing with the system, how quickly it fills up and when I want it to drain. So now it's draining pretty, or it's filling up pretty quick and probably take, I don't know, five minutes or so before this thing would fill up completely, which we don't want because we don't have a whole lot of water in the fish tank below. It's probably a gallon and a half of water down there. And that's kind of how the system will function for now. So this also provides some oxygenation to the water in that it's pumping up. It's going to go through rocks and kind of build up those oxygen levels for the water and the fish while simultaneously cleaning the water because ideally we're going to have some plant vegetation on the top there and it'll just be like a living um, filter as opposed to a mechanical filter that you can get at the store and it's I think it's that mesh type material which I don't really want to do. And so, so far it's working pretty good. Here's an example of some living material that we want in the system. Uh, we have a cat and so we have some cat grass that we can put up there. It should, you know, give some fertilizer to that grass and also help clean the water for the fish. Um, the water itself has to cycle over a certain period of time. There's certain bacteria that will grow which will allow us to convert the um, bacteria to things plants can um, utilize, and it's the nitrates and nitrites um, system, I suppose. So right now we just have a little demo on how it'll work out, and hopefully the water will stay clean like this, and we'll go from there. So this is the rock that I'm using for that tote. This is red lava rock. Um, usually, if you're doing a big system, you can find a landscape company close by and buy it by the yard. It's generally 50 bucks a yard or so, plus delivery. And the rock itself is extremely light. It's very coarse. It would cut your hands, so generally you should use uh, gloves. Um, but it's also very porous, which allows for bacteria to grow really well because there's so much surface area from all these pores and everything in the lava rock. Um, one thing you'll notice with lava rock is that you have to wash it really well. So I filled up a bucket with a quarter, a quarter of a five gallon bucket with lava rock and fill it up with water. And when you move it around, you'll see the water discolor at a red color. Probably depends on the lava rock you're using, but You'll want to generally do two washes, uh, two or three washes, um, so the water is as clean as possible before you put it into your system. It's not a huge deal. I did it, and it just discolors your water for a little bit until all these fine minerals um, fall out of the lava rock and float down to the bottom of your fish tank. Um, but generally, I like to pour this water into the garden and mineralize the garden with everything that's left over from here. So you can kind of see that probably over time that doing a couple washes of this stuff will get a little cleaner. And here is um, another view of kind of that finished product and we can load up the rocks into the tote at the top. So I'll go ahead and do that and load up the system. You'll probably see the uh, the water start to discolor a little bit. Once again, it's not a huge deal. And um, after a couple days, it usually settles and it's the water's pretty clear. So 
So I should probably use a glove because it's cutting up my fingers right now. But might as well keep going with it. And so I think these rocks will also wick water up somewhat because um, once the system was up and running for a while, I noticed the rocks were generally damp because it is such a tiny system that you can update it really quickly. So here's it uh, filled up. I have two elderberry plants on each side. Uh, those were cuttings from last year, so they have roots in them. They'll probably leaf out. I don't have any lights on top yet, but basically if the entire tote is filled with lava rock, that water is moving through the majority of the rock and filtering it out. And also the elderberry plants up there and anything else that I decide to plant up there will further filter the water and um, make the water cleaner. And also when it's the water's going through the system, it's going to oxygenate because it's running through all those pores. It's hitting it. As you can see, it's quite porous. And if you see um, that little gray piece, that is a 90 degree half inch irrigation elbow. Um, in the middle there is a two inch PVC pipe. It's about, I don't know, two inches or so. It's kind of like this where it has the bottom of the pipe. I've drilled holes at the very bottom. And the basic idea is that there's a cap on top the water will flow through the bottom upwards. Um, on the inside of that two inch pipe, there is a standpipe, a half inch standpipe, and that determines the, the height of the water. So it fills up through the bottom, it goes over that internal standpipe, and once it does that, it creates a suction and a vacuum. And once the vacuum goes through, it will uh, suck all the water all the way down to that very lowest level. So in working with this system for a couple days, I decided that the little tiny fish tank was not big enough. I went ahead and went to Walmart, got a bigger fish tank, a normal size fish tank. I think this is about 10 gallons or so. I moved over the tote on the top. I'm going to switch it around, but you can see on the bottom there, we have the PVC pipe with the elbow. In order to get the fish acclimated, um, you want to put them in the water you are placing them. So they're inside their bag from the pet store, and they're going to sit in there for 10, 15, 20 minutes until the water temperature is equal. Um, the water that I took was actually rainwater. Since I'm here in Boise, the water is a little harsher, but the rainwater was pretty good. So we had 10 gallons of rainwater that I put into the system. I just filtered out any particles by pumping it into a sock or cloth and it took out the particles and the fish were able to go in there. Well, that's all I have. Thanks for watching.